Welcome to the Cool Instruments for Het Cats podcast and the world of creating musical sounds where every note has a story. In this podcast, we delve into the fascinating realm of unusual and intriguing musical instruments. From the depths of history to the cutting edge of innovation, we'll explore the instruments that have, or will, push the boundaries of what we consider music. Join us on a journey of discovery as we uncover the secrets of the world's most fascinating instruments, the people who play them, and the music they create. Now here is your host, Dr. Donald Rickett. Hi, I'm Don Rickert, and I'm uh, broadcasting from uh, Hiawassee, Georgia, which is in Towns County. And I'm here with uh, Will Hurd, uh, who is in Washington, D.C., or the D.C. suburbs. And um, welcome, Will. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Do you mind telling a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're coming from, and, uh, you know, what do you do professionally? Well, I... Um... I live in Washington, D.C., and I've been um, a member of the Air Force Band. I play viola in the Air Force Band. Uh, I've been doing that for almost 22 years. And I also teach Suzuki violin um, at a local community music school uh, called uh, Levine Music. I've been doing that for about 12 years. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, the, fir the first time I actually saw a violoncello da Spalle in person was at the shop of... Hiroshi Izuka, um, in uh, right outside of Philadelphia, and I, I have a Izuka viola. He's the for he's the one that that sort of pioneered that that design. Yeah, the um, the sort, sort of the the cutout, um, and sometimes it's called the Izuka pattern. Um, he he calls it a mo modified amore pattern, and it's based on uh, viola de amore, and it's mm -hmm. it's uh, it well, it's an interesting design. And, um, you know, he produces, you know, fantastic violas. He, he, he makes violins and cellos as well, but he, but he's, I think about 90% of his output is viola. And it's, um, you know, he had, he's really found a, a niche in, in viola making. And he did make a violoncello da Spala, which I saw in his shop. And, uh, I was, I was there for, uh, an adjustment and I said, oh, is that a violoncello da Spala? And he said, he said, yes. And... So I asked him if I could play it, and um, you know, so I, I played it, and then he 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 asked me if I'd like to borrow it. So I borrowed it for for about a month and played on it. I um, for some reason I couldn't. He, I'm not sure. He, he, I don't think he had like the right strings on it because I, whenever I tuned it up to the pitch, yeah. it always felt like the strings were going to break. So I, I I really tuned them down like it was kind of a whole step lower than than modern tuning yeah um, so i would i would play it like that and i i i did enjoy it but i didn't really take the time to to get comfortable with it to kind of yeah. modify it and get the right strap he had like um kind of like a silk scarf that that he put on it and yeah. i didn't really want to do too much to an instrument that i that i didn't own um, I didn't want to start like putting, you know, gizmos on it and stuff like that. So I, I didn't really get that, that comfortable with right. it. Um, and I was also, you know, I play violin and viola, so I, you know, I'm kind of busy enough. So I decided not to, I mean, it, it, it was for sale um, and I, I could have purchased it, but I decided to, to return it. And then a few months later, I, um, I missed it. I missed having it. And um, and that's when I started looking for um, for somebody who who made them or had them, and I came upon your website. Um, and I think you know, from a practical point of view, the the thing that I imagine doing with it primarily is um, bringing it to lessons and playing, you know, accompanying my violin students on pieces, you know, pr primarily Baroque pieces. Right. I'm a Suzuki teacher, so 
a lot of their repertoire is is Baroque, Handel sonatas, Vivaldi concertos, Bach double concerto. So, you know, that was my, my primary goal. And, you know, it, my beginning with the Spala worked out a little bit differently. Uh, your Spala came to me um, by post at the beginning of 2020, right? I think it was January 4th. And so I spent some a couple of weeks getting used to it. And then by the time I was ready to, you know, start like playing with my students, then uh, we went into this uh, lockdown uh, during the pandemic. So I was just home with it. But uh, I started getting into, you know, seeing people posting on social media, split screen videos. And right. so here was my, you know, my opportunity to experiment with this, this kind of thing and play different voices throughout the full, the full range of the string right. instruments. And, you know, the, there were many months during the beginning of the pandemic where I, I really didn't interact with people face to face uh, for, for quite a while. A weird and, time. It's hard yeah, to believe. Yeah, really weird time. And, and I had quite quite a lot of time on my hands, too. And I think a lot of people did. And so I would just, you know, I was like, okay, well, let me let me experiment with, you know, making some split screen videos or using this, this, this you know, mysterious GarageBand app on my right. computer that I had never used before. <laughs> and I, I found that I that I really enjoyed doing it. And I had a lot of time. You know, now I, I I still enjoy it, but I really I don't have the time to do it. It it is it is quite time consuming, and it it was nice having you know long stretches of unorganized time to to yeah do this kind of thing. So I made a a fun recording of the Bach Double Concerto and uh, a couple of movements from uh, Telemann's Viola Concerto. And I, I, I think the Bach double is on your website too, or it was at one point. Yeah, so. I, whatever I can find, you know, I, I, yeah. I, people playing so if stuff I've made, uh, not just violoncellos de Spala, but you know, I, they tend to end up on my website. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and you know, I enjoy um, you know making making videos. Sometimes one one of my students, um, well, most students really end up like enjoying Pachelbel's Canon at at some point, right? And so uh, a couple of years ago, I, I recorded the bass line for her. And then she made a, um, I think this is uh, a student I had probably about age 11 or 12. And so she put the whole thing together. She made, a, you know, using, I think, acapella or Adobe. She took my bass line and then made a, you know, a three-part canon of her, of her own. And that was kind of like her holiday card that she sent to, yeah. like, family members. And, and uh, I thought that was... That was kind of kind of cool um, that that she was able to do that, and that was during the pandemic. That was during during the time where I didn't uh, see anybody face to face. Um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, and and that's yeah that. So I I got into a lot of um, split screen type stuff. Um, I was never really active on social media before the pandemic, and I started sharing some of really? those. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that was you really... really I'm, I'm sorry. You really jumped in with a lot of a lot of cool videos. Yeah, well, you know, I I enjoyed making the videos, and I figured, okay, well, why don't I just share these, these videos, and, you know, if anyone's interested. And then I also just, you know, in, in my teaching, I would do a lot of... Um, you know, teaching on Zoom, and I would make videos for my students, like practice videos. Yes. And so I, you know, a, a lot of my social media, especially on Instagram, was, you know, kind of creating more like practice tips or like following a process of, you know, so for example, like, you know, false harmonics, how do you practice that or something like that? And so just going through a process and so, so some of those were you know videos that I would make for my students and then I would just edit them and make them a little bit more polished looking for for social media um, and then um, at the same time I was preparing a, a recital I, lo I learned the the Bach cello suite number no. six which you know you know that's that's sort of the you know the kind of the, the famous the stairway piece. the stairway to heaven of Baroque music Right, the stairway to heaven, right for for violoncello da spalla. Right, um, 
And that was a, that was one of the suites that I had never I had never learned in you know on the viola in in college. I think because you know because of the um, the key you know what key do you play it in? Uh, if you you know if you play it in D in the original key, then it ends up you know quite high. It's just really kind of high, yeah. um, uncharacteristically high for the instrument. Um, and so a lot of violists will play it in G, which lies more characteristically on the instrument, but it's, you know, then you have to change the octave in certain parts. Right. So I kind of, I didn't want to deal with that, but, uh, with the violoncello da spalla, I didn't have to make, make any decisions. <laughs> um, so that, that was a lot of, very enjoyable playing, um, but one one thing that was interesting is I you know I sort of agreed to do a a recital a, you know kind of a concert at the school that I teach at uh, which is uh, Levine Music a community music school that has a concert right. series and um, so I I created a program with um, you know the Bach Cello Suite number number six and some other pieces uh, Han Handel Sonata I played the bass line on and I I really didn't know how to play the instrument right so I you know <laughs> agreed to play a concert in you know, 10 months or whatever. And I didn't, I could not play anything. Like I did not, I didn't, I wasn't, I still wasn't that comfortable, you know, with shifting or playing double stops or string crossing. Right. So I, I kind of had to figure all that out and, you know, having a goal, you know, really helped and gave me the incentive. Um, also just having the time, you know, during the pandemic, just having, having the time to actually do it was, um, you know, was kind of a gift in, in in a way because I don't know if I would have been able to to do it if I hadn't you know, if I hadn't had the time and I didn't really have anything else to practice for. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, cool instruments for head cats is brought to you by Don Rickett Musical Instruments, designers and makers of bespoke stringed instruments. All music clips were either recorded in the making of the podcast and played by the guest or guests who have granted permission to use the clips or otherwise used with permission or in accordance with fair use regulations. The music for the intro and outro sequences is performed by the group attire on jaw harp and djembe and is used with written permission.